Pirates are one of the most infamous groups of individuals in history. Well, they weren't known for their table manners now, were they? However, other than all the pillaging and destruction they wrought, the one thing these guys were known for was their ruthlessness, and nothing could be more terrifying than their methods of torture. And sometimes, even fellow pirates weren't safe from this. Pirates didn't live the easiest of lives. Not only were they in fear of accidentally coming into contact with military ships, but they also had to consider dealing with the punishment of their own crew. Now let us take a look at some of the most infamous torture techniques used by pirates. Flogging. When it came to discipline on naval vessels during the Age of Sail, the Cat of Nine Tales was the go-to collection of whips. As legend has it, the Cat of Nine was stored in a leather bag while not in use, and if it was ever removed from the bag without receiving lashings, it would never be returned. Historians contend that this is where the saying, once the cat's out of the bag, the consequences must follow, had originated. Since most captains wouldn't dream of using such harsh measures on a crew that likely became pirates in order to avoid such conditions, the risk of having to endure them was greatly lowered for pirates. If the entire crew, or the vast majority of the crew, believed that the man had breached one of the ship's articles, that this, the set of regulations they pledged to adhere to, then the guy would receive a flogging. The quartermaster was the pirate ship's corporal punishment officer. Infractions included bringing women on board, striking another man, or failing to keep weapons in an effective state of readiness, which resulted in floggings. A mariner who was flogged would be lashed on his bare back with a cat of nine tails while tied to the mast or grating. The nine strands of rope that made up this unique whip ranged in size from about a quarter of an inch 6 millimeters in diameter to about 2 feet 60 centimeters in length. The nine different possible lengths of the whip each had three or more knots to increase its effectiveness. For more egregious offenses, extra knots were sometimes added. To keep from crying out and drawing the ire of his shipmates during a flogging, the sailor would sometimes bite on a bullet. If he did cry out in agony, his friends would mock him and label him a 19 Yale. Well, seems like the support groups during this time weren't all that good. Keel hauling. Being keel hauled was the harshest punishment a sailor could receive short of death, and even then, his prospects for survival were slim. Since the ship's captain was the de facto lawmaker, keel hauling was not limited to a specific list of infractions, but rather at the discretion of the captain. As a result of the extreme violence involved, keel hauling was usually reserved for the worst offenders. The criminal was restrained so that he couldn't simply jump in the water and swim away. Something resembling a cannonball or ballast were strapped to his thighs. Because of this weight, the sailor was able to descend to the ship's keel by carrying this much weight. When the sailor was ready, the crew would run a rope up his back and through the main portion of the mast and another line up his feet and through the block on the side of his ship. The rope passed under the boat and came back up the other side and waiting for the captain's signal, the crew helped the sailor overboard. Two ropes were passed through blocks fastened to the ship's sides and secured to a small hatchway grating, as was the case in the French method of keel hauling. Next, the sailor was strapped to the grating like a gurney, except that instead of weights, the grating itself bore the brunt of the sailor's weight. Despite its seeming randomness, this chaos actually followed a predetermined pattern. Slowly pulling the rope would cause the sailor to descend below the keel, preventing him from hitting the majority of the barnacles that had fused onto the ship's hull. A faster rope pull would have kept the sailor in touch with the keel, increasing the severity of his injuries. Ships of that era acquired barnacles that clung onto the wooden keel, making keel hauling a particularly cruel punishment. Anybody pulled through these barnacles would end up with severe cuts all over their body and face when they finally surfaced from the water. Some sailors would suffer catastrophic injuries, including amputations or even loss of the skull due to the barnacle's strong pull. This seems like an extremely painful way to die. Well, pirates weren't known for their mercy. Marooning. If a sailor commits a heinous act such as mutiny, thievery, or cowardice, he or she may be given a death sentence that is perhaps even more unforgiving than death. The sailor would be marooned or cast ashore on an uninhabited island with nothing more than a keg of water and a pistol. And sometimes, they would be stripped naked as well, setting the individual at sea in a small boat with no oars or a single oar was another option to abandoning them on land. 
Many sailors requested execution upon realizing that death by thirst or hunger was their last remaining option. While some were given the means to finish things before they went insane from lack of food or water by receiving a firearm as a present, famous mariner Alexander Selkirk from 1676 to 1721 was marooned in the Juan Fernandez Islands in the Pacific in 1704. Edward Lowe was another man left on the island because his crew had grown tired of his cruel behavior toward both friends and foes. He sure didn't make any friends. Sweating Although this might not seem too bad, believe us when we say that it is far more sinister than the name implies. When a pirate crew wanted to punish someone cruelly, they would poke and prod him with cutlasses, swords, and other sharp tools while he struggled to avoid getting hit. His situation wasn't helped by the fact that he was tied to a mast by a thin rope. The victim had no choice but to continually dance around the mast to the tune of the ship's fiddle. Walking the Plank Pirates during the Golden Age rarely used the walk the plank method of execution, in which a prisoner is blindfolded, handcuffed, and forced to walk out onto a plank protruding from the deck into the ocean. However, the punishment has been depicted in numerous works of fiction about pirates, and some suggest that Stead Bonnet, hanged in 1718, came up with the idea as a method to amuse his crew and get rid of troublesome passengers. According to Plutarch, from the 45th century to 125 AD, Cilician pirates from the 1st century BC made Roman captives walk over a ladder on the water as a means of execution. The practice of ordering drunken sailors to walk in a straight line down a board placed out onto the deck is another possible source. Humiliation some of the games that pirates played with their prisoners were quite close to torture. Blooding and sweating was one such sport, in which a captive was forced to run between a line of sailors who stabbed him or her with the sail needles. Then, the victim was sealed inside a barrel with a bunch of cockroaches. A less harsh option was to force the subject to run in circles around the mainmast. The victim was urged on with the point of a cutlass to run until they passed out from weariness. Well, in life without Netflix, they had to find some sort of entertainment. Now there were a lot of nastier things that pirates did to their prisoners and fellow pirates, but the ones that we have mentioned above are the nastiest and most extreme punishments out there. Humans were a crazy bunch back then. Even civilized societies would rely on such punishments to get their way. One such example was torture by rats. In this case, a rat was kept inside a cage and the open end held to the prisoner's body. The cage was heated to agitate the rat, which would make the rat claw at the only surface that would give way. That is the prisoner's body. Imagine a huge vermin clawing at your stomach trying to enter your body. It's enough to send shivers down our spines. So that's all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time!